A subgroup of a group G is a subset H of G that is also a group, which means that H needs to be associative, it needs to have an identity, it needs to have inverses, and it needs to be closed. However, we don't have to prove all of those properties separately every single time that we want to prove something is a subgroup. There is a better way. Today, we're going to go over three subgroup tests, the two-step subgroup test, the one-step subgroup test, and the finite subgroup test. We're going to prove each test and do an example of applying them. First, we'll prove the two-step subgroup test, which says there's only two things we need to prove to establish that H is a subgroup. We need to prove that it's closed with respect to the operation, and we need to prove that it's closed with respect to inverses. What we're really doing here is proving an equivalent definition. We're saying that H being a subgroup of G is the same as this. Now, if H is a subgroup of G, then obviously these properties are true because H is a group. So certainly it's closed with respect to the operation and it's closed with respect to inverses. So we just have to prove the other direction that if H is closed with respect to products and inverses, then it is a subgroup. So let's get into it. We're assuming that H is a non-empty subset of our group G. So right off the bat, that guarantees that we have associativity. The operation in H is the same as that in G. G is a group, so it's associative. All right, now we need to prove that H has an identity, and indeed it does, because it's non-empty. So we can take an element, say X, from our subset H, and we're assuming that H is closed with respect to inverses. That means that X inverse is in H. But we're also assuming that H is closed with respect to products. If we have two elements of H, their product is also in H. So since X and X inverse is in H, X, X inverse, which is the identity, must be an element of H. So indeed, H does have an identity. And then we're done. The only other two properties we need to establish that H is a group, and thus a subgroup of G, is that it contains inverses and that it is closed with respect to the operation. However, those are the two properties that are given by this test. And that proves that the two-step subgroup test is a valid way to determine if something is a subgroup. If we can prove that it's closed with respect to the operation and inverses, the rest is implied, and indeed it will have to be a subgroup. For our example, consider the additive group of real numbers and the subset H consisting of the logarithms of all positive rationals. Certainly H is non-empty because there are positive rationals and their logarithms are defined. They're also real numbers. Thus, we can apply the two-step subgroup test to show that H is a subgroup of G. We just need to show that H is closed with respect to products and inverses. Beginning with closure under the operation, remember in this case the operation is addition. We take two arbitrary elements, log A and log B, from our subset H, remember that A and B must be positive rationals, and then we'll add them together, and we need to show that sum is also an H. Log A plus log B, by our log rules, is actually log of A times B. But we know the rationals are closed under multiplication. A times B is certainly a rational number. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that if you're not sure. And of course, since A and B are both positive, AB is positive also. It's a positive rational, so log AB is an element of H. So H is closed under the operation. As for inverses, since the operation is addition, the inverse of any element log A is negative log A. But by our log rules, negative log A is log of 1 over A, which is definitely in H, because the reciprocal of a positive rational is a positive rational. Since H is closed under the operation and is closed with respect to inverses, by the two-step subgroup test, H is a subgroup of G. Next, we'll prove the one-step subgroup test, which says if we have a non-empty subset of a group G, then H is a subgroup of G if AB inverse is in H whenever A and B are in H. 
This AB inverse wraps the need for closure under the operation and for closure of inverses into a single nice test. And remember that what we're proving here is really an equivalent definition. To say that H is a subgroup of G is the same as saying this, so we can really just use this test to quickly establish H as a subgroup. If H is a subgroup of G, then it's obvious these conditions are true because that would mean H is a group. So if A and B are in H, well, B inverse has to be in H, and so does the product AB inverse. So we just have to assume these conditions and prove that implies H is a subgroup. For starters, since G is a group, we already know that we have associativity. The operation in H is the same as that in G, so it is associative. Next, we'll prove that H has the identity. We'll take an arbitrary element of H, we know it's non-empty, so we can do that, and considering this property that AB inverse has to be in H whenever A and B are in H, let's say A equals X and B equals X. Well, that means that AB inverse, which equals X times X inverse, which equals the identity, has to be an element of H. Because again, anytime A and B are in H, AB inverse has to be in H. That's the condition of the one-step subgroup test. So if we set A and B both equal to this arbitrary element X, we get this, guaranteeing that the identity is in H. As for inverses, we use a similar trick. Say A is the identity, which we just proved is in H, and B equals the arbitrary element X. Then... We know that the identity times x inverse, which equals x inverse, has to be an element of H. Again, that's just because any time A and B are in H, AB inverse has to be in H. And in this case, AB inverse is the inverse of the arbitrary element x. Finally, we have to show that H is closed under the group operation, so let's take two arbitrary elements, X and Y. We just proved that H contains inverses, so Y inverse is an element of H. So let's say A equals X and B equals Y inverse. Then again, AB inverse has to be an element of H. But what is AB inverse in this case? Well, in this case, AB inverse is X y inverse inverse, and the inverse of y inverse is y. So ab inverse is xy. Thus, if x and y are in h, we've shown that xy has to be in h also. Thus, establishing that h is closed under the operation, and that completes the proof. The one-step subgroup test is a valid way to show that a non-empty subset of a group is a subgroup. If this one condition holds that any time A and B are in H, then AB inverse is in H, the rest of the group properties follow. For our example, consider the multiplicative group of real numbers, that's what this is, and then the subset H consisting of all integer powers of 2. Certainly, H is non-empty because it contains infinitely many powers of 2. We're going to prove that H is a subgroup of G using the one-step subgroup test. So we'll take two arbitrary elements from H and show that AB inverse is in H also. So here are our two arbitrary elements, 2 to the n and 2 to the m. n and m are both integers. Note that 2 to the negative m is the inverse of 2 to the m, because of course 2 to the m times 2 to the negative m is equal to 2 to the negative m times 2 to the m, which is the identity of 1. So then, this element 2 to the n times 2 to the m inverse, which is what we want to show is in h, this is equal to 2 to the n times 2 to the minus m, which by our exponent rules is 2 to the n minus m n and m are both integers, so n minus m is certainly an integer as well. But that means 2 to the n minus m, which we just showed above, is 2 to the n times 2 to the m inverse. This has to be an element of h. Thus, h is a subgroup of g by the one-step subgroup test.
Once more, we just took two arbitrary elements from H, 2 to the n and 2 to the m, and showed that 2 to the n times 2 to the m inverse, which is 2 to the n minus m, also is an element of H, and thus H is a subgroup of G by the one-step subgroup test. And finally, here's the finite subgroup test. Let H be a non-empty, finite subset of a group G, then the finite subgroup test says that H will be a subgroup of G if H is simply closed under the operation of G. That's all you need, and you get that H is a subgroup. Of course, if H is a subgroup of G, then it is necessarily the case that H is closed under the operation of G. So to prove that this is equivalent to the definition of a subgroup, we just need to assume this condition and show that it satisfies all the group properties. First, associativity is granted because the operation in H is the same as that in G. So we know it is associative. Next, to prove that H contains the identity element, H is non-empty, so let's take an arbitrary element, say X, from H. Since H is finite, the order of X can't possibly be infinite. Recall that the order of an element is the smallest positive integer power you can raise that element to to get the identity. The order of X must be some finite number N because H is finite and closed. So since X is in H, x times x is in h, but also x times x times x is in h. All positive integer powers of x must belong to h, but h is finite, so there can't be infinitely many distinct powers of x. At some point, it must get to the identity. So since h is closed, x times itself n times is in h, but like we said, n is the order of x, so that's equal to the identity, and so the identity is in h. Once again, for clarity, if the order of x was not finite, then it would have infinitely many distinct powers, which would mean h is infinite, because by its closure, it has to contain all of those powers of x. I'll leave links in the description to my lessons on order talking about this stuff if you need to review that. Next, we have to prove that H contains inverses, which is the hardest part. So let's say we take an arbitrary element A from our subset H. Now, if A is the identity, then the inverse of A is also the identity, which we already proved is in H. So we can move forward assuming that A is not the identity. If A is not the identity, then the order of A, the smallest power we need to raise it to to get the identity, must be greater than 1. And each power of a, a, a to the 2, a to the 3, and so on, all have to be elements of h. Again, this is a result of h's closure. Now again, we know the order of this element of h must be finite, because h is finite, and h contains all the powers of a. This sequence of powers of a goes on forever, even though it must have duplicate terms. Because it has duplicate terms, though, we could take two terms from this sequence of powers of A, say AI and AJ, that are equal, but where one occurs later in the sequence than the other, say I is greater than J. For example, if the order of A happened to be 5, so A to the 5 is the smallest power of A, giving the identity, then A to the 6 would be equal to a to the 1, for example. But once more, this infinite list of powers of a has to be in h by closure, but it can't actually contain infinitely many distinct powers of a because h is finite. So for sure, we can take two equal powers of a that occur at different points in the sequence. Then, by multiplying both sides of this equation on the right by a to the minus j, which we know exists, right, that is in the group g, perhaps it's not in h, but it is in g, if we multiply both equations by that, what we get is a to the i minus j on the left by our exponent rules, and on the right we would just get the identity e. So we have a to some positive power, i minus j is positive because i is greater than j, a to some positive power is the identity, but a is not the identity. 
So its order is greater than one, which means this power to which it takes on the identity, this power i minus j, has to be greater than one because the order of a is greater than one. But that means i minus j minus one is greater than zero. And clearly, since this is a positive integer, a to the i minus j minus one is an element of h because h is closed, so it contains all of these powers of a. So a to the i minus j minus one is an element of h. But remember, a to the i minus j equals the identity. So a to the i minus j minus one equals the identity, that's just a to the i minus j, times a to the minus one. And that is just a to the minus one. So a to the i minus j minus one, which is an element of h, we see equals a inverse. So we've shown that any element of h has an inverse also in h. Finally, closure was given. That's the one condition in this finite subgroup test. So we've proven the test is valid. If we have a non-empty finite subset of a group G, we've established that that subset being closed under the operation of G forces it to have all of the group properties. Thus, it would be a subgroup. Let's try it out. Consider this group G, the additive group of integers mod 10, and consider the non-empty subset of elements generated by 2, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 0, etc. Then we can take two arbitrary elements in our non-empty subset, say 2 times n and 2 times m. Those are just arbitrary elements of h, since h contains multiples of 2. Remember, the operation here is addition mod 10. So if we add these two arbitrary elements, 2 times n plus 2 times m, well, this is just n multiples of 2 plus m multiples of 2, mod 10, of course. And that's just n plus m multiples of 2. And this is clearly an element of our subset H because that's what H contains, is the multiples of 2 mod 10. Thus, we've shown by the finite subgroup test, since this finite subset that's not empty is closed under the operation of G, it must be a subgroup of G. And those are your three subgroup tests. As we saw, they are all valid ways of establishing that a non-empty subset of a group is in fact a subgroup. In any particular situation, one subgroup test may be more convenient than the other, but they're certainly more convenient than having to prove all the group properties every single time you want to prove that a subset is a subgroup. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you find these abstract algebra lessons helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description, it's a huge help. Thanks for watching.